when you first arrive here, uh, it's for an assessment day and my, my daughter brought me, um, that was a very, very difficult time because obviously the fact that she had to bring me and um, I was very, very upset, very emotional and to be honest, really didn't have much hope. I really didn't have any hope at all because I had failed so many other detoxes or I had, they hadn't been successful, but never a residential one. But that first day was a day where I spent most of the time crying, but being met by the doctors, being met by the ward manager Debs, being shown around um, every aspect of it, so that when I actually was admitted as such, it really wasn't quite so awful. Um, that's a really important day, that first one. Um, but I didn't know what to expect. I just came in here full of fear of where I'd got to and n with very little hope. Okay. Um, so I'd like to show you around the unit. So if you'd like to follow me, I'll show the unit. So there are lots of locks and keys, which I found slightly worrying when I first came here. But you can walk out any time. You know, I couldn't believe that people would actually walk out because I thought, well, this is where I have to get it. But, you know, people have different journeys. Some aren't quite ready. Um, so there we are. So here we go. This is the AC unit. This is where we walk in. Um, I came here 14 months ago for an alcohol detox. And I'll start to show you around, OK? Um, oh, it's locked. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is the room where we have the work groups. They're very, very helpful. It's ways in which to look at the ways you cope normally, um, your communication styles, um, how to set goals. It's, I found the work groups essential, actually, um, because, you know, it helped you um, really think about your recovery outside of here, as opposed to just the physical detox in here. Um, I hadn't been to Acer before. Um, I was, uh, I, but I did have several community detoxes. Um, unfortunately, I kept relapsing, and the last relapse was very, very bad. Um, and so my key worker at DHI suggested that I came actually onto the unit this time. And um, I would like, well, I can say it's the best thing I've done so far. Okay, so I'd like to come along. This is the um, assisted bathroom for service users who want to have a bath. Also, they can use this toilet when we're in the work group. And this is the one for staff, and doctors and peer supporters like myself. Otherwise, um, the service users have a bathroom in their own rooms. They have a, a wet room. This is the wonderful tree. You can call it the tree of life, the tree of recovery, whatever. Uh, and when we leave here, we write something on a leaf. You don't have to. Um, to, to put on the tree and it's really inspirational. There's a lot of encouragement for creative things here and, and I didn't so much, I did uh, a lot of reading um, but a lot of people find that the, um, the colouring, the um, baking, things like that that you are encouraged to do if you'd like uh, are things that a lot of people haven't had hobbies for a long, long time. You know, my hobby was drinking so to actually engage in something else that's more creative brings your confidence back, gives you some ideas for when you leave here uh, as to how to pass your time. OK, if you'd like to come along this way. This is the staff kitchen, um, where the meals are served from. They come in as ready meals that are heated up. For most of us, and I, I was no different, looking after ourselves in terms of eating had just stopped. So to have three meals a day was... Um, vital really as part of the physical getting better and they're served through here. Staff will come in and help you um, bake or uh, cook if you want to, um, which a lot of people like to do at, at home. And of, of course, anyone who's recovering from drug or alcohol addiction will tell you that they like to eat cakes and biscuits. So making those is quite popular. Okay. Manager's office. When we first arrive here, we go in here to um, have all our bags and clothing checked. And sadly, um, a lot of people who do come in, um, either through fear or perhaps they're not as committed, will bring in um, drugs or something with them. So the staff have to be very, very careful of that. 
before you actually come onto the ward, you have an introductory day. I found that extremely upsetting. I've never been to a unit like this before. And like a lot of people, I felt, what's it come to? That, you know, I felt so ashamed and frightened and broken. And what made it worse for me was it was my daughter that brought me to show me around. And I just thought this was the end of the world. But the lady who is the manager here, is Debs, she is just wonderful. She's just so warm and almost maternal, really, and makes you feel, it's OK, we're going to look after you. There's absolutely no condemnation or judgment or severity in any of the staff's faces or attitudes. Um, I think because I was so ashamed, I, deserve, I felt I deserved to be, I suppose, treated like I, I, you know, I, I had done things wrong, but there is none of that here. Lots of information here. Because you do have a lot of time on your hands, uh, it's probably a good preparation for going to real life because we've spent so much time on our addiction, you know, buying it, using it, drinking it, whatever, that to take that away, suddenly there's a massive amount of time on your hands. So, this is the dining room where we all eat. Okay. That in itself is challenging sometimes because, uh, you know, you're eating as a group, you're, you're socialising, and particularly in the early days of the detox, you don't really feel very sociable. In fact, probably don't feel like eating. But um, the, that, that sense of um, being sociable and, and looking forward to the food as opposed to a drug or a drink um, builds, it grows over your stay here. Um, people make their own breakfast um, and in this, in here, is the kitchen for the service users. So, tea, coffee, the fridge always has sandwiches in it, um, there are dishes left. Uh, people can bring their own soft drinks in if they like or things like that. And that's um, fairly heavily used is the, is the little kitchen there. So, if you'd like to follow me, that's the laundry. If you're here for two weeks or perhaps longer, then you will want to get some washing done. Um, again, it's really part of getting back into self-care, into taking care of yourself a little bit more, because a lot of us were living in pretty awful ways um, before we came here, and self-care and keeping up with washing and ironing and things like that pretty much formed by the wayside. We'll go in the garden now. Um, when you're here, you're encouraged to participate if you like. I, I personally did. I spent a lot of time weeding. Um, probably the control freak in me, I don't know. But um, again, it was to pass the time. I was here in June, so it, um, it was nice weather. And this is the only area that you can smoke. Um, and hopefully, you know, people chat and get together and you get to know people. Um, because the worst thing would be to just stay in your room all day. It's not encouraged um, to sort of ruminate and isolate because it's probably what we've been doing in, you know, out there. So, um, yeah, so this is the garden, which is lovely. And this is the relaxation room. If you have a meeting with a support worker or you can have visitors in the evening and this is one place people come to to just have a little one-to-one -one chat with them, um, you can come if you want to just do some colouring and it'll be on your own. I had um, a visit here uh, from the local priest that comes here, local vicar, uh, and that was in here, and also my own visitors, although they can also go in the garden with you in the evening. Um, and if, if you want to make a phone call, um, then you can come in here and the staff will... Somebody will sit with you anyway whilst you make your call. Um, because obviously a lot of people need to keep in contact with what's going on at home. And it's just generally a very peaceful, pleasant space, really. That's the staff office, um, all the admin, all the doctors, etc. Um, the nurses are in there. And again here, this is lovely, this is some of the work that people have done, um, encouraging uh, photography and some of the beautiful drawings. Something very therapeutic in, in focusing on this. It's, it really does help with taking your mind off your problems or if you're feeling physically, you know, like 
cravings and things like that. Um, some of the cakes that were made. So it's lovely to see the work that people do. Yeah. And somebody said, them here, interrupt anxiety with gratitude. And um, that's certainly why peer supporters come here, because we are so grateful to how ACE, ACE has turned our life around. So if we go on here, this I actually used, and I'm not a gym person, but um, I'll see if I can get the light on this. So even though I'm not a gym person, I thought, well, you know, it's about doing something different, doing things differently. So I did come in here and worked on the um, rowing machine and on the bicycle thing, <laughs> until I'm not a gym person. Um, and I enjoyed it. I just brought my radio with me and listened to all sorts of nonsense on that. Um, and it was a good start to the day. And I started to understand what people say about exercise making you feel a bit better. So, but uh, I certainly had a nice time here. Um, I think it's a, a good asset to have. I'll shut the lights off. That's the male corridor down there to the male rooms. I'll show you the female ones in a minute because they're all the same. Um, and this is the... This is probably, in the first week, the temple of all service users because this is where you get your medication. And all service users at various times think that they know more than the doctors. So sometimes there will be disputes in the garden about, oh, I didn't get as much meds as you, and things like that, you know. So you're not allowed to wait outside, but you're always happy when somebody calls you in. The, and the staff are lovely, you know, that even when you're not having the official medication, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling unhappy, you can talk to somebody, have a one-to-one. -one. There's not sort of, this is your lot and then you're cut off. There's ongoing concerns about how your physical well-being is, which is brilliant. If you'd like to follow me, this is the female corridor. That was the room I was in. Um, this is standard, you know, um, bed, uh, a couple of units and wet room. Um, but it's, and you've all got a window which can be opened, you know, so that um, you can't get out of it, but it can be opened and so it can be fresh and it can be light and airy. This is the women's television lounge. Uh, the other lounge is communal, um, sorry, I should say male and female. Um, this is, the, un the basis of this really is a safe space for ladies because a lot of people that come here, the alcohol or drugs are, is not the only problem in their lives. There could be, have been all sorts of trauma. Um, and they may feel uncomfortable sitting with men in a room, particularly when predominantly, it, that usually there's more men than women in any one intake. So they can come here and watch something, or if they want to watch something different to the men, and it's, it's again, it's a nice environment, or come and have a chat. Um, it's just a, a safe space, if particularly at the beginning, when people are really shaky, they just don't want to be sitting on settees with the men um, watching TV, so. It's just a lovely alternative. So this is the main lounge. And this is where, as you can see, there's DVDs, television, plenty of books, lots of craft activities as well. Uh, we have the meeting in here for mutual expectations, how, each other, how we treat with each other, etc. And a community meeting first thing in the morning, just to raise any issues or discuss what's going to happen that day. Uh, there's always lots of communication from the staff, so you know when your work groups are. Um, a lot of people, including myself, wanted to really get out of the unit and if there's staff around or peer supporters then we can take a, a walk around the grounds. The grounds are lovely here um, and we could go to the museum, the Blackberry Hill Museum, which is really interesting. There's a garden there as well, which you can see is lovely and sunny. You have to have a staff member to go there, but we've always got access to this one. So it's a really nice space. A lot of people stay here in the evenings to watch TV together. A's unit was, I didn't know what to expect. It was my first um, sort of res residential detox. Um, it was much better than I had feared. Uh, I, th I don't know what I expected, I really don't. It was more challenging in some ways, but more reassuring in others. The staff made it fantastic. They, they really made me feel safe and supported. It was challenging because I'm mixing with, I was mixing with other people 
who were at different journeys, you know. I haven't had much experience of um, drug abuse but um, and the lies that that can lead to. I uh, had a lot in common with the other alcoholics. Uh, but we, we got on. It, it opened my mind. It gave me a sense of... By the time I left, it gave me a sense of hope. I would say, to begin with, I was fairly unsure and very, fairly uncomfortable, just socially. The staff are amazing. Uh, again, I didn't know what to expect, but they immediately... It, it's, it was about, you know, you'll be fine, you're going to be OK. It was a sense of, we're here to look after you, for you... To, to help you turn your life around. There was no en sense of punishment in it. I don't know that there would be, but I think because you have so much shame and, um, well, just disgust with yourself, that you almost assume that it'll be slightly judgmental. But it was very encouraging, very professional. A wonderful mix of, obviously, the doctors and medical professionals, if you like, and the support from um, within the workshops, uh, the night nurses, just conversations with staff who valued you as a person. That's, that's how I felt. I felt valued as a person. Even though they do this week in, week out, it felt unique and special to me. Making friends as such, I wouldn't say it was easy. You lose the habit of socialising so much when you withdraw from the world and, and your only friend is, is a bottle. So I think we all of us, in our own ways, um, have lost, had lost the habit of, you know, just banter, just normal conversations. It tends to be initially about how awful, you know, our, where we got to is. But as, as you start to feel a little bit better and become more familiar with people, you, you can have conversations. I was surprised that you can have some laughs, you know, um, about silly things, which was nice. So, yeah, I, I felt a bit self-conscious in that um, I was older and I was female and there weren't that many females here. But honestly, it, it was fine. It was really... And, and a couple of people I've seen since, you know, in Bristol and we're still rooting for each other. So it was, it was good.